Hi everyone, I'm Kristen, the Cross Stitching Runner, and welcome to my channel. I want to say a big hello and welcome to all new and returning viewers. And if by chance you have stumbled across this channel, this channel is all about cross stitch with a bit of life stuff thrown in. And this is a special episode because this one is all about a stitching retreat that I recently attended and I wanted to share with you my experiences at the retreat because this is the first in-person retreat that I feel lucky enough to have attended and all the things that I purchased or received as gifts and such as part of the event and I'll also insert some clips of the things that I purchased and received because there's quite a lot and I didn't want to be talking the whole time and rabbiting on about the different things and my thoughts on it or anything like that. So I'll insert the, the little clips a little bit later on. In the meantime, though, the retreat was hosted by JK Stitching Supplies and Janet, who is I guess the the face so to speak of JK Stitching Supplies she was absolutely phenomenal her and her team that organized the event and everything that was involved with it my my mind was absolutely blown with it I I guess I wasn't really knowing what to expect with the the event or um, really knowing how it was going to work or anything like that and the stitching retreat was held on the central coast which is about an hour or so north or north in terms of driving uh north of sydney and i drove up with my boyfriend uh, it took us about two and a half hours or so to to get to there and it was a really good easy drive we were able to skirt around the outskirts of Sydney which meant that it was a lot of the the highways and motorways and such so that took a lot of the the stress away and it's it the retreat specifically was held at a suburb or location called Long Jetty and I've never been there before and we were really lucky with the weather in a sense that yes we were inside 90% uh, of the time but it was sunny it was just really beautiful it meant that we were able to appreciate the views that we had from either the hotel room that my boyfriend and I were staying at or the views that or I was able to see from the conference room where the retreat was being hosted at and absolutely beautiful it really was and the other thing that I absolutely loved was being able to see a heap of pelicans. Pelicans are one of my favourite birds and I guess it comes stems from a childhood memory of going holidays to the south coast and always being on the lookout for pelicans as part of a bit of the fun that mum would um, have with us to say, "Oh, can you see any pe see any pelicans?" Uh, as we go over the the bridge as we approach Batemans Bay, and sometimes we would get to see them, sometimes we wouldn't. Here at Wollongong. I actually see quite quite a few pelicans whether they be flying around or chilling out wherever they are but the amount that we saw at Long Jetty slash the entrance that was something else partly because they I think perhaps during the summertime mostly uh, tourists get to have the opportunity to feed the pelicans so the pelicans that are hanging around a bit knowing that they're potentially going to to get a treat from visitors or they might even get a treat from the fishermen as well because where we stayed the I guess it was like the, the river mouth flowing into to the ocean and such the some of the fishermen would actually make the most of the way the waters were and sometimes they would be lucky enough to actually catch some fish and as part of the fishermen 
cleaning up the fish and such, they would potentially throw some scraps to the pelicans. I've also heard that pelicans would get a bit brazen and maybe even some of the other types of birds as well would become quite cheeky and brazen and actually take off with some of the, the fishermen's catch. So that I didn't actually see. I didn't see the birds take off with any any of the fish, but it just sort of gives you the idea or understanding of how comfortable pel the pelicans especially are with being around people. And what I also hadn't anticipated was just how big the pelicans are in the sense that I know that they're big birds, but I'd never been really close to them. And during one of the morning walks that Michael and I did before he dropped me off to the retreat, there was a fisherman who had caught at least one fish. I don't know how many exactly, but he was cleaning the fish, doing what he needed to do before going home. And there was a small flock of pelicans actually hanging around where, where this fisherman was. And I was perhaps maybe a metre and a half away from these pelicans and with them just sort of standing as they normally were, just waiting for, for any kind of scrap of anything. The, these pelicans would have been a good metre high, if not a little bit taller than a metre. And to help put into perspective, I am a little over a metre and a half high, uh, tall. So I'm in feet, inches, those sorts of measurements. I am about five foot one, five foot two in height. So that would mean the pelicans might be at least four feet, um, give or take. I, I've never ever looked up measurements or anything like that, but hopefully that gives you the impression of or understanding of just how tall these birds are. And I'm just in absolute fascination with them. And that's where it was just really cool going to, going to the retreat. It was also awesome in terms of being at the retreat being around so many like-minded people. And I just want to give a quick shout out to the people that I was sitting with on at the actual table, especially uh, uh, Linda and Jill, who are either side of me. I was regularly getting, <laughs> getting up and down from my seat, initially in the mornings as part of my nervousness of just sort of getting up, having energy, moving around and then also getting up, doing a little bit of shopping at the retreat as well. And I just wanted to, to say thank you both to, to Jill and Linda for uh, putting up with me, getting up and down and, and all the rest. And also on the Friday afternoon when I first got to the retreat I was excited and nervous and a combination of similar feelings and emotions which meant that I didn't speak very well in the sense that I was speaking in half or jilted jilted at least half sentences anyway and that I appreciate can be difficult for uh, other people who have never met me and we're like, okay, uh, she's a bit strange perhaps, but thank you again for all the people that I have, I did speak with at the retreat if I was a bit strange with how I communicated. And I, I did say as much as well where, especially on the Friday afternoon when the retreat started, I, I did acknowledge that I wasn't communicating very, very well. It was nerves and excitement and all that that type of energy and that on the Saturday the the next day I would be a lot better with my communication and I think for the most part I I was okay with with all of that I had calmed down a lot I had relaxed enough to be able to speak in full sentences and coherent sentences that for the most part made sense and I I just wanted to, to say thank you to, to everyone that I did uh, encounter. I also do want to 
Uh, do a shout out to Peggy. I actually got to, to meet Peggy. We were on the, the same table and Peggy also has her own floss tube channel uh, called Peggy Still Stitching or Stitches. My apologies, Peggy, if I've uh, muddled up the name of your channel, I, I apologize greatly on that. And part of why I'm also wanting, wanting to shout Peggy out is she gifted me some fabric that she had started just for by a little bit, a little bit of stitching on some fabric, but she fell out, fell out of love with the, the fabric. And uh, when she'd asked the table if anyone stitched on 18 count Ada, I put my hand up and said, yeah, actually I, I enjoy stitching on 18 count because I love the coverage that I get from it. So Peggy gifted me some beautiful hand dyed fabric and I already have uh, quite a few projects in mind of what I'd like to, to stitch on it. So it's a matter of watching this space and seeing how things go. But I just wanted to say again, thank you very much, Peggy, for gifting me some, some absolutely beautiful fabric and I'm looking forward to to doing uh, the fabric justice and finding a pattern that looks absolutely amazing on it. So with the retreat, it spanned across two and a bit days where Friday, the, the retreat started at about sort of three o'clock in the afternoon through to 10 p.m and it finished on Sunday at five o'clock in the afternoon. And it was just absolutely awesome to be around so many like-minded people who love cross-stitching. And it was really cool being able to see all the different projects that people were working on. And what made this particular retreat extra special was that it had a very strong Australian theme to it in the sense that there were two designers who were guests at the retreat. The first person it was uh, Fiona, Fiona Jude, Jude Judge. I am apologising again for getting the surname muddled because I, I know Fiona's work as being country threads and my goodness, I I think I did pretty well to not fangirl too badly, but to still express my gratitude to Fiona and the beautiful designs that she has been creating over many, many years, decades. And I was able to, to let her know that just how much I love her work and that I have quite a lot of her patterns or charts in my stash. I even purchased more at the retreat and I also took along a quilt that I made out of a lot of her designs and there are on that quilt perhaps four, 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 four patterns that are other people's designs but for much of a muchness the aim was to have a country theme to it and for the quilt to pay homage to the farm that I grew up on and my parents still own that farm and I I'm just so thankful that I was able to to show Fiona like hey this, this is how I chose to finish off the the patterns rather than uh, the traditional way that we tend to finish our our projects of framing them and such so she she was absolutely blown away by it and the really cool thing is that uh, at the retreat I had the help of Fiona and uh, and um, Amy my memory is fading and either way I had some people uh, helping me out with actually carrying the quilt around the the room there were about 11 plus tables uh, in the conference room. There were a little over 100 people at the retreat. And yeah, people were, actually got to see the, the quilt and 
a lot of them were able to to appreciate my gosh they they really love the idea though of making a quilt out of their finished pieces and hopefully it's inspired them to perhaps do the same or something similar with their finished pieces and I know that uh, on the floss tube channel animal instincts that kelly she's made a quilt out of some of her projects as well uh, especially over the covid years when we had all of our lockdowns and such i know that she wanted to uh, do something a bit special with a lot of the pieces that she had worked on and, and completed during during that time so that that was a really cool part of the retreat and what I absolutely love is that other people brought along some of their finishes as well. There's one piece that I'm thinking of, and this is where I'm also kicking myself for not taking any pictures to actually share with you what I'm about to, to gush over. There was one piece that I'm, I'm thinking of where is this beautiful landscape piece that is a country threads design based on, um, some artwork i think it's something very similar i think it's the artist who i'm wanting to say andrew nolan or something very similar to that he's a famous australian painter from the colonial days when in australian history we had bush rangers and we had uh, people from europe coming over to settle in australia for different reasons and this particular frame piece, I think, is from the, the based on colonial days where there's some people who might be either digging a road or they're doing some kind of work um, in, surrounded by bushland. And this person who, who did the stitching, she got it professionally framed and it just looks absolutely stunning. It is beautiful. Uh, if I do find the, the picture of the chart i'll see if i can include it where i've got hands otherwise i'm just going to look really silly with doing funny hand gestures so the other really beautiful piece that is standing out in my mind that is a another country threads design is the picture of a kookaburra that someone has stitched and what they did was stitch it on some really beautiful blue fabric and it looks like it was a uh, hand dyed fabric that may may have a bit of sort of tie dyed a bit of mottling in it and it the colors of this fabric it's this beautiful blue and i think i've got some fabric on the floor that i will grab a little bit later the color choices the color choices really made the the project pop it made it stand out and then also the choices of the colors used for the frames and the matting and everything just absolutely stunning and that has inspired me to stitch a kookaburra chart that i purchased at the retreat and potentially stitch it on the fabric that i have next to me that i will grab and share with you this is the fabric that I was thinking of for the kookaburra, which is also called Bushman's Alarm by Country Threads. And this is, the, I guess, the similar combo that I was thinking of that I was trying to describe just before that someone who attended the, the stitching retreat had stitched and done an amazing job on it. And the, one of the things that I also want to note with this particular fabric is that it is Paddock Lane Designs. And the really cool thing is that I actually got to meet Lisa at the retreat. And what I hadn't fully realized or appreciated is that we're already, we are already Facebook friends. And I don't know why I didn't think that we weren't already, but it was just so awesome to be able to meet Lisa and her team who do a phenomenal, beautiful job with all of the different fabrics that they they dye. And 
it was absolutely awesome to see such a wide variety of fabrics that were available for us to purchase and in a video clip thing that I will attach to this particular episode you'll actually get to see some of the fabrics that I purchased some of which are Lisa's fabrics and I really cannot wait to make a start on a, a huge variety of charts that I purchased and then figuring out which pieces I actually want to, to stitch on those fabrics and the other thing for why I want to make note or shout out Lisa is that in one of the most one of the next upcoming whatever the wording episodes from Lisa is that you'll hopefully see me a little bit on that video so go check out Patty Clay Designs their, um, her website Lisa and her Floss Tube channel and everything in between and if by chance you haven't seen uh not seen or if you haven't seen rather even purchased or stitched on any of her any of her fabric I strongly recommend that you at least go check out her website and hopefully you find something that really sparks joy for you that you're able to add to your stash because she's a, she's an Aussie she's local and I really just wanted to try and shout her out and just do what I can to help with promoting um, any any Aussies, noting that um, Lisa doesn't know that I'm doing this bit of a shout out, but part of why I'm wanting to reciprocate in that sense is when I got to, to meet Lisa and have a bit of a, a chat with her, what I love about Lisa is that she is a champion and a similar to Peggy as well, both are champions of Aussie-based uh, designers, creators, um, uh, everything in between of anyone who is Aussie who is trying to, to put themselves out there in the cross-stitch world and to really expand our community, whether it be doing cross-stitch lessons, floss tubes, uh, designing uh, cross-stitch patterns or uh, any of the accessories and such and tools that we need to do our beautiful crafting and all, all that joy in between. So that's where I just really wanted to, to shout Lisa out as well, but also acknowledge uh, Penny, uh, Peggy as well. The other, while I'm doing shout outs and such as well, I also wanted to shout out Chloe because I got to meet her in person and it was absolutely awesome being able to meet her in person because we had met at a previous online digital retreat which was uh, Winter in Stars Hollows um, digital retreat hosted by the Black Needle Society and it was because of Chloe talking about JK's uh, stitching supplies stitching retreat that we've just recently attended that uh, I found out through Chloe about the retreat and therefore things have rolled on to the way they are and Chloe is such a beautiful person. It was absolutely awesome to to meet her in person and Chloe also has her own floss tube channel and I'll put her details in the description box below as well. So if you haven't already, go, go check her out. Um, same goes for Patty Glenn Designs and for Peggy's channel as well. So that is pretty much it for me rambling on about the stitching retreat and all the all the things. I'll include the charts and purchases and everything um, at the end of this video and I really, really hope to get to see you all again very soon. Thank you all so much for spending a bit of time with me for this episode. And I really do hope I can attend another in-person stitching retreat. I don't know when that will next be. It all I think it depends on life and everything else that's going on. And I'm going to have a look at, not when, what other stitching retreats are happening where they are and where that can fit in with 
the rest of life work and fun yeah until then i will see you all again very soon especially for the spooky stitching update catch you all later guys Thank you.